Well, you might know also Thich Nhat Hanh. He's a Vietnamese monk who is revered for his teachings on mindfulness, on peace and compassion. But I think that overreaching truth that he realized and that he teaches is right concentration. And I think that's one of the, the profound lessons that we can gather from who he was and what he taught and the amazing life that he lived. You know, when he was a child, he spent nine years in seclusion. He spent nine years living as a wandering monk walking through the mountains. And it said that he meditated many hours a day, spending time in that presence, connecting with the essence of who he is, and really contemplating what life is, what life means, and developing the message that he brought to the world. One day while he was walking in the forest along a path, he saw a flower. And he stopped and he looked at the exquisite magnificence of this flower. And he looked at it in such a way that he beheld it. And he says, I actually became that flower in that moment through the, the act of concentration. And for me, it's about can we do that too? Can we develop such a, an awareness and such a concentration in our lives that we can have that same kind of presence wherever we are, whatever we're doing? He gazed at that flower and its exquisite beauty. Imagine that. Imagine living that way yourself and seeing every moment as an opportunity to be in the exquisite beauty of life. In that moment, when he was looking at that flower, the subject-object barrier disappeared, and he became one with that flower. Thich Nhat Hanh realized that right concentration enables us to transcend separation and experience the interconnectedness of all life. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that the, what we, what I believe, the spirit in us, as us, desires for us to connect with, to be in that interconnectedness and to realize that with all life? He said that right concentration ends the suffering that stems from being disconnected. He believed that suffering was caused by being disconnected, just disconnected from ourselves, disconnected from the truth, disconnected from love. And so he's saying that if we can find that way and focus our concentration in such a way that we will be connected with that essence. And doing so, we won't experience suffering because that's what our spirit wants. That's what our heart wants. That's what our mind wants. That's what our allness wants is to be connected with each other and with ourselves. He, Thich Nhat Hanh believed that right concentration unlocks awakened understanding, right? It, it, it unlocks that, that 
part of us, that desire within us, that potential within us, so that we can be fully present to who we are. Do you see that? Can you feel that? Can you imagine what that feels like to be so connected with yourself, with your higher power, with your essence, with the truth that you live, that we live from that place? We're literally watering the flower that opens and blossoms the insight that's within us. We've been studying the Eightfold Path, and this is the eighth week and the culminating week on this series that we've done um, on the Eightfold Path. And the Eightfold Path is eight ideas, eight principles that work together to bring us connection to the allness that we are. And so we've covered all, this is, the, well, today we're looking at right concentration, and the, the way the Buddha taught this was that if we, could, if we could connect with each one of these aspects and blend them together in our consciousness, that we could actually demonstrate We could achieve enlightenment, that we could achieve the oneness with everything. So by the time you leave today, you should be there. (laughs) At least you're going to have the tools, and we know that this spiritual journey takes a little bit of effort, takes a little bit of work, takes some intention, and uh, for most of us, it doesn't happen overnight. Maybe for all of well, I don't know. I can only speak for me. Maybe for you it does. So, so today we're looking at right concentration and what that is. Now, what's been fun for me about this, about this series is I've been able to make the connection between two of my favorite philosophies, Buddha, Buddhism and unity. And I wanted to know how are they similar and how are they different? Well, in Buddhism, right concentration is all about training our minds through focused meditation, focusing and concentrating on the breath, repeating mantras, and cultivating a mind that is focused and less affected by distraction. It's developing the, the deep sense of absorption, right? Where we can totally be present in the, mo- in the moment and absorb all that is and be present to that. To be mindful, right? Which to me means being absorbing everything that's happening and being totally present to it. And unity has similar principles that develop the power of focused concentration. And these tools are affirmative prayer, meditation, using affirmations and denials, and cultivating an awareness of the presence of the divine. And so between unity and Buddhism, their philosophy is a little different. In unity, where it's about connecting with the divine that's within us and everywhere in the, uni- in the universe. In Buddhism, it's kind of about, it's about connecting with the essence of truth that is who we are. It's really just about semantics for me, right? It's the same idea. We call it spirit or the divine or God. And Buddhism says, those are just principles of who you are. I think that's really interesting. So right concentration is, leads to awakening because it calms the ripples, the ripples of the mind, right? So that we can be calm, so that we can be focused, so that we can be present. And so we can see clearly exactly who we are. 
We can see it. We can know who we are. The kind of the the angle that we're shooting at with all of this is that our minds have an immense transformative power that we can harness through focus, concentration, and meditation, right? So we can be so, so present, and we're setting the intention to know that our minds are powerful, that our words are powerful, and our presence is powerful. And so we're really talking about how can I get in that place, where I can feel so connected to the essence of who I am that I know who I am. And I act out of that intention in everything that I do. So, in short, right concentration means dedicating time to train our minds through meditation, to open us to the infinite possibilities that are available to you, to me. I love what Jack Kornfield said. He said, just practicing right concentration can lead to states of mental tranquility and insight. Just, just by taking the time and the, spending the energy and focus on it. Haven't you discovered that this path of realization, this path of awakening, takes effort, doesn't it? You know, un- unfortunately, um, <laughs> I don't know if it's unfortunate, but, but it's we, this spiritual process that we're about, takes setting the intention and then doing the work, right? If we're going to experience love, we can't do so unless we experience forgiveness, Right? It takes work. It takes being determined to make that transformation. And that's the, the beauty of everything that we get to do. And, and what I find, maybe you too, is that life leads me on a journey of experiencing the things where I get to open up. True for you? Those are the things that we define as difficult or hard. <laughs> they often show up in our relationships They show up in our friends. They show up in our family. They show up, right? Pretty much wherever we are, if we're having a difficult time with somebody, something, it's usually not about them, right? It's usually a clue to wake up, pay attention. Something's going on here. Dang, I hate that. Don't you wish you could just uh, pray it away and firm it away and boom, they're gone, right? How many times have you said, boy, if, this, if I could just get this person out of my life, it would be so easy, <laughs> right? But the funny part of it is the same stuff happens in our minds. So that's really what we get to work with. This whole Buddhism and unity philosophy is really about its practical spirituality that gives us principles to look at ourselves, And to realize, dang, because this situation is difficult, it's because there's something for me to learn here. Don't you hate that part? (laughs) It'd be easy if we could just snap our fingers and everything's a piece of cake, right? But (laughs) I don't know if any of us have ever experienced that. But the beauty is, once we begin to do this work, it gets easier and easier because we recognize it, right? We, and we get that thing that goes, whoosh, you ever feel it? It feels like it goes like a, like a fountain or a volcano, right? It goes, something happens, somebody said something, and you get this, and it comes up, and it gets into your head, and your head feels like it's about this big. Everybody else experience that? Right? <laughs> no, it, I know. It's just about me, right? <laughs> Ooh, I can feel it coming. <laughs> and so what, what these practices do are give us the tools to recognize what's happening and to take a breath. Oh, and to realize, you know what? I don't have to react from fear, right? I don't have 
to get angry. Certainly, I can notice the feelings, right? They're there. Feelings are great. Feelings are uh, angels that are <laughs> giving us a gift, especially the, uh, the thing, feelings that we don't like so much, right? They're really angels saying, pay attention. Something's happening. What do you want? What do you want to do about it? What can you do about it? Oftentimes, the best thing to do is pray, go into meditation, ask yourself, what am I, what's going on here? Why am I angry? Mm, somebody said something, I did something, and just breathe into it and say, okay, wow, thank you. Thank you for sharing this. I get to learn something. Hmm. So let's just breathe. Because this work that we do, and I imagine I like to think the reason you're here is because something in your soul brought you here to understand this, to get this. And it could be it's pissing you off. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? The, the stuff that we get to move through that has the most transformative power for, power for us are the things that are the most difficult. <sighs> Isn't that great? It really is great because it's, it's, a, it's, a, magnif it's a magnification, it's an opening, it's an insight into what's available to us. So that was a whole tangent I hadn't expected to go on. So <laughs> it just seemed like it's appropriate. I don't know. So, um, so we're really looking at how can we get into this place of right concentration? What can we do? And, and really this right concentration kind of pulls all of these, these, this eightfold path together. It's kind of the, the culminating essence and the truth that we're looking at today. And <clears throat> speaking about things that get in the way, uh, in uh, Buddhism, they talk about um, okay, I took a side trip there, so I forgot to uh, talk about Let's talk about the benefits of right concentration. Let's do that before we get into the challenges that we face. It's always good to look at the benefits first, right? Because then you go, oh, okay, I can, that's where I'm going. That's what I want. Then we can deal with the challenges. So the benefits of right concentration is that we tap into the foundation of wisdom within us. I've kind of said that in a few other words. So when we get in this place of right concentration, we're able to understand the wisdom that's within us, the insight that's within us. Because that, that's where everything begins, by understanding that we have this power within us to make the transformation to be peaceful, to be loving. And another benefit of, of right concentration is that it helps us to anchor our presence in this moment right now, right? Because this is where the truth is. This is where spirit is. This is where God is. This is where love is. This, is the, this moment is the most important thing in your life, wherever that moment is. And by right concentration, it helps us to capitalize on what is possible in this moment. So it anchors our awareness and through practice. And a lot of what we've been about on this journey in the, the Eightfold Path is to help us to anchor our awareness into the moment. So when we're not there, we can make a conscious choice to be there. Another thing we can do is we can discover inner peace. Who doesn't want that? Isn't that what you, ultimately, isn't that what you want? To be peaceful, right? And so we're, gonna, we're talking about how can we get to that place of inner peace? And 
Another benefit of right concentration is that we let go of attachment to thoughts, emotions, and perceptions, <laughs> right? Take a breath on that one. I don't know. I don't, want if I, I don't know if I want to let go of my thoughts, right? I work uh, 72 years to have these thoughts, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm attached to my thoughts, right? And how does that work for you? Right? <laughs> so, so we want to let go of our attachment to our thoughts. You know, lots of times we think our thoughts are who we are. But the truth of it is thoughts are just thoughts. You know, we, we are human beings on this planet, most of us anyway. I don't know about the rest of you. But, and and we, are, we have this cycle of thoughts that are running through our heads all the time. Some of them are ours and some of them are other people's ideas. So we want to let go of our attachment to our thoughts. Because oftentimes we think my thought is it. You know, this is what I am. This is who I am. Doggone. Uh, this is it. I got it. I'm sticking with it right? But if we realize, oh, have you ever said, uh, I used to say this a lot as a child, I'm stupid, right? I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I don't, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. You ever say anything like that? Yeah, we all do, right? And I say, bullshit. Well, <laughs> I did say that. So, <laughs> right? It's just a thought, Right? It's not the truth. It may come through and you go, oh, you had a thought, and you go, oh, but it's not true. Because you are the aspect expression of spirit. That's the truth of who you are. That other stuff is just stuff that's going through. That's just stuff that's in the movie. It's not the truth of who you are. So and emotions are the same thing, right? The people have said for a long time that, you know, when I feel angry, that feeling is real. No, it's just a feeling. Somebody said something, and I almost said pissed me off, but I wouldn't cut, say words like that twice in one talk, <laughs> right? I just wouldn't do that, right? And that's my thought, but I did it anyway. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, so we, our emotions are just feelings. They're the same thing. They're just running through us, right? And we feel them, and we get attached to them. And, and oftentimes we say, this is who I am. I'm angry, right? I'm sick. I'm tired. I'm God knows what. But it's just, again, it's just a feeling, it's not who you are. And, you know, and we know we don't want to push the feelings away, right? We don't want to push the emotions away. It's just a feeling. And we get to breathe into it and ask if we are enlightened enough. This is what I'm feeling. Why am I feeling this? Hmm, interesting. I said something. Somebody else said something. Created an emotion in me. And I take a breath. It's just a feeling. Another thing <laughs> that we think is real are our perceptions. Right? This is my perception of this event. This happened, and I'm defining my experience based on my perception. It's just a perception. It's just a perception. It doesn't mean that it's true. It might be. But oftentimes, it's just something that we think is happening, and it's not even happening. <laughs> it's just our perception. And of course, what happens if we're attached to all these things, then we react out of that perception, that attachment, that thought, that emotion. And oftentimes, we can be literally out of our minds. Right? Because we're not, and I'm talking about God mind, spirit mind, truth mind. And that's when we get in trouble. Right? Oh. So, 
So, so how do we get into this place of right concentration? How do we develop it in the face of obstacles? And lots of times it's, it's about realizing that the obstacles are there so that we can re- recognize them and say, you know, that's, that's not the truth of who I am. That's not where I want to focus my attention. So I've got to, the, now I'll get into a couple of the hindrances that keep us from being mindful, that keep us from being present. And we just, we just discussed attachment and craving as part of that, having that desire for something, right? When we desire something that we don't have, when we crave it, right, it keeps us from being present in the moment. When we, I just talked about attachment, so I won't go into that again, but when we are attached to thinking a certain way, having things a certain way, or being a certain way, it keeps us from being focused and being mindful. And the second hindrance is ill will or aversion. This includes frustration, anger, resistance. What? You said ill will. Yes, or ill will. This is, this is, these are keyed by these illusions by the emotions, by the thoughts, by the feelings, and we can feel like, I'm just not enough. Things just aren't good enough, right? I, I want something different. I want to change it. I feel angry because I don't have what I want. So another thing that can hinder us from being fully connected is um, being is, is apathy, not caring, not wanting to be present, right? Oh, it's too much work. Oh, I don't want to do it. Or, you know, I, I just don't want to face stuff, right? Anybody ever feel that way? I, you know, this is just going to take too much work to deal with anything, right? I almost said screw it, but I won't say that on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Right? Unless I'm talking about carpentry, that's different. <laughs> but I am talking about putting something together, right? We're putting together our consciousness. All that we're doing is we're working on our consciousness, right? And nobody said it was going to be easy, yeah. right? right? Nobody ever said it's going to be easy. This path to enlightenment is almost said something else, but I won't because I've overwhelmed you with all these words, and you're going to walk away and say, you know what Reverend Tinsley said on Sunday morning? <laughs> And it's probably because you're feeling apathy, right? <laughs> so you're going to blame the fact that you don't want to do what you want to do because I said something. <laughs> so you're going to let my behavior be a hindrance for you, right? <laughs> oh, boy. And finally, the, uh, the, last, one, the last one there is skeptim- skepticism and doubt. Oh, I did. Thank you. I, I skipped. Uh, I was feeling so restless and worried about whether you were getting this or not that I skipped right over restlessness and worry. <laughs> because we get restless. Why? Remember, we talked about this uh, in the past. We get restless. Why? Anybody remember? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to send out a quiz. We get restless because we're not focused. We get restless because we're not doing our passion, right? We're not doing what that spirit within us wants to do, right? So the way that it lets us know is it gets restless. We get restless because it's like, oh, 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 I'm all restless. I don't know why. I'm restless because I'm not focused on what I'm supposed to be doing, what my heart wants to do, what my spirit wants to do. So I get restless by looking, looking under every rock, trying to find things. And I, and I worry about stuff. What are we really worried about? We're really worried that we're not focused on what we should be doing. 
if we have a, if we are centered in the truth of who we are and what our spirit wants, we don't have to worry about anything because we're focused. We're in the moment. Hmm. All right, so I covered that one. So the next one is skepticism and doubt. I <laughs> thought you love those, <laughs> right? Did anybody's mind ever go there? And you know, you might, if so, you're probably going there right now. Going, you know, what is what is this crock of whatever, right? It's again, it's you know, when we're skeptical, we're avoiding the truth. When we're skeptical, we are coming from that place of judgment. And again, it's happening because we're not focused in who we are. If we're totally focused on and expressing what we are, we don't have to be skeptical of anything. Right? If I'm totally centered and focused and my life is on purpose, I don't need to show my skepticism for anybody or anything because I'm in tune with it, right? I don't have to show doubt because I know the truth. I don't have to solve anybody else's stuff because I know the truth in me. So, what in the world do we do with all this stuff, right? So, I, my suggestion is, if any of these things that I've mentioned today are a hot button for you, if it goes, whoo, or, oh, man, I don't want to do that, then pick that one. And take that one and work on that. Because that's where your transformation lies, is in the thing that we find the most resistance Hmm, okay, so we're going to change the energy a little bit. And I'm going to do a, um, an exercise, because you might be saying, well, okay, how can I experience right concentration? It comes from practicing mantras. It comes from meditating. It comes from being conscious that you want to experience the fullness of right concentration. So we're going to do a brief exercise right now. It may feel like a meditation, and that's kind of what it is, to work with our affirmation today, which is, I am a force of truth, virtue, and peace in the world. So just think about that statement. I am, let's say it together, I am a force of truth, virtue, and peace in the world. When we're in that place, we are experiencing right concentration. When we can be a force of truth, because we are connected with what that truth is. When we're connected to virtue, we're honoring and living the true principles that are important to us. And when we are at peace, it's like the work is done. Been there, done that, I'm doing that, I can be at peace. So we're going to take this affirmation, and we're going to use it as a mantra, and I'll keep it up on the screen, and just for a couple minutes now, I invite you to begin to say this over and over again, and I'll say it two or three times, and I invite you just to be with this statement, to feel whatever comes up for you, and then to let it all go, and bring your focus back to the affirmation, all right? So take a breath, breathing in, breathing out. Close your eyes or open your eyes, whatever works for you. I am a force of truth, virtue, and peace in the world. 
Breathe. I am a force of truth, virtue, and peace in the world. And breathe. I am a force of truth, virtue, and peace in the world. And now say it to yourself. Breathe. Breathe it in deep into your awareness, into your consciousness. I am a force of truth, virtue, and peace in the world. And I invite you to bring your awareness back to this moment. And this affirmation is on the walk your talk or my summary of today's talk in the back that you can take on your way out. So I want to kind of bring this eight-week journey that we've been on of the eightfold path kind of into um, a conclusion and I, what I've done is kind of distilled what I believe are the most important things that we discovered in this eight week into five statements. And these are also available in the back. And what I've discovered is our perspective shapes our reality. The way that we see the world shapes the way we are in the world. The second one is mindful speech and action determine destiny. What we say and how we act determine our lives. The third one is wide use of our energy achieves balance. And so much a part of what we're studying is to really look at where do we spend our energy? Where do you spend your energy? And we want to be conscious of spending the energy in a way that creates balance in our lives. And the next one is living fully in each moment connects us to the now. This is really our goal in this Eightfold Path is to develop the consciousness, the awareness, the practices of being present in the moment. And lastly, and most powerfully, is that concentration, right concentration, what we're talking about today, unlocks infinite possibilities. When, when you are focused on and concentrating on what's really important to you, unlocks all of the possibilities for you in the universe. Remember, you are already 
Buddha nature. You already have that. You already have the Christ nature. You have all of that. It is the truth of who you are. It's the, the gift of life that we've been given as spiritual beings having a human experience. You have it all. It's all there. Isn't that great? And you just get to develop it, develop it to bring it forward. Kind of reminds me, and I'll end with the story today. Kind of reminds me of years ago, I was um, taking a, a, a mindfulness workshop, and we were um, in um, a park in San Mateo, Memorial Park in, in San Mateo. And it was a mindfulness exercise. And the teacher was having us walk around and be really mindful of what where we're stepping, what we're doing, and just really practicing, taking s- slow steps, being mindful, practicing, being present. And... Um, I walked into a tree, right? And it knocked me down, flat on the ground. And, <laughs> and everybody laughed, right? Because we were all looking in close proximity. And for a moment, I felt embarrassed. And then I got up, and I, I, I realized that what I was doing was being so focused, practicing being mindful that I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> right? And so the, the idea really is how can we be mindful of this, this exact spot and being mindful of everything that's happening at the same time? And not to be so focused that we're walking blindly like I was. And so, you know, and, the, and part of that too is, you know, you all laughed when I ran into the tree, right? And we all laughed when I ran into the tree. And the, the beauty is to remember that this is supposed to be fun, right? And we make mistakes and we do the best that we can. And we, if we fall down, we get back up, laugh, and do it again. Because... This is who you are. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> well, I invite you at this time to prepare your love offerings and your uh, tithes and your gifts to unity on Maui. And as you prepare your gifts, to uh, do so in a, a reverent way, recognizing that what you're sharing with us is energy. It's the energy, green energy, that moves through us and um, contributes to the work that we get to do on our vision of creating a world that works for everyone and creating spiritual truth that we can all adapt, um, emulate, and display in the world so that we create uh, love and light. And we are a part of bringing that to the world. So thank you for your gifts. They mean a lot to us. And um, unite you with us in um, this, this vision of a life that works for everyone. So as you hold your gift, let's pray and affirm together our um, affirmation of prosperity, which begins, through a grateful giving heart, my mind and life overflow with the abundance of God's all-providing, infinite supply. And so it is. No. <laughs> All right. So, loving spirit, thank you for these gifts that have come to us in love. We hold them. We bless them. We give thanks for them. And knowing that they are part of the energy of light and healing that's happening right here on this amazing island. We give thanks for all of the help and the relief and the truth and the love that is reshaping our island right now. We're so grateful and thankful for all of the people and the energy that's coming to us from around the world. And so it is. Namaste. Thanks, Al. 
All right, let's see. Where are we going? Oh, yes, Faith Rivera is coming on October the 15th. She'll be right here in this place, so mark it in your calendars. She'll be uh, doing the music during the service um, with Robin, I'm thinking, actually, and Robin will be back in a couple weeks, and uh, she'll also be doing a concert after our Sunday service. So uh, put it in your calendars and put a reminder in. It will be amazing. And let's see, we have no flowers today, but if you're wanting to donate some flowers, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Put your name on a date and tell us why you, uh, how you like the flowers to be mentioned and to recognize yourself or someone else. And Prashanti continues to do their meditation on Tuesdays uh, right here from, five, from 6 to 7.15. Uh, so come on and check that out. And also, um, Carrie's doing the sound bath meditation on September 23rd. There was another date, wasn't there? No, it was last night. It was last night. Okay, so that's happening on September 23rd. A great way to, to come and be at peace and um, feel the amazing energy and healing presence that sound brings to us. And next week, our prayer chaplains are doing this, our service here. Um, they are talking about prayer, the path of trust. And if you're curious about what that, what that is about, you can talk to Marlene or Adam. I'd love to fill you in on that. And uh, they'll join our team of prayer chaplains next week for that. Um, Oh, oh, well, we're gonna, oh yeah, no, we're gonna do it all over again. Thank you for, thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been a wild week, um, and I'm, I'm actually, you know, I've been here 11 years, and as part of my journey, I get to have um, um, a sabbatical. And so I'm starting a sabbatical on Tuesday, and so I won't be here for three weeks. I'll be on island. Um, and, and, uh, I'll, be, I'll be here on Maui, but I probably won't be right here. And you're, you're going to be in wonderful hands. We have great music. Um, and Adam's going to uh, do the platform for th three weeks in a row. So, <laughs> you'll know, you'll get more than a couple laughs out of that. So, um, what, what a great thing. And he's also part of the chaplain uh, talk next week on the 17th. Um, and so, and also, just so you know, um, my beloved Emily um, is, we had planned on, uh, her taking a, a trip to Santa Barbara and then going on a sabbatical uh, and going to um, Eugene, Oregon. But all that changed. On her flight to California, she caught COVID and it turned into, into pneumonia. And so she is in the hospital in Santa Barbara, uh, went from ICU to a regular room yesterday. So... <laughs> So she is on the mend, and it's, uh, it's really different when she's not here, because usually she's like doing everything and making sure everything is happening, and that got done today, and I'm so blessed by all of you who did that. Uh, so thank you for being here and uh, keeping things moving. So yeah, so she's much better. I'm going to fly to Santa Barbara on Wednesday, our plan is right now, pick her up and bring her back to Maui. And um, so that'll be fun, because she gets to eat my food now. <laughs> so anyway, I think, uh, what else we got? I think that might be just about it. Oh, my walk your talk, which is a summary of everything I talked about today. Not nearly as long as my talk was, but that's in the back. Um, and you can take a copy on your way out. I apologize for being so long-winded today. Uh, but um, the wind was with me, I guess. <laughs> oh, come and tell us about that. Here's Adam. Let's give Adam a big hand. hang out in my living room and watch TV with people. So, uh, tomorrow, uh, so next Sunday after service, this will be my living room. 
And so at 1230, please come back, bring some food or, you know, grab something and come back. And we're going to watch a movie. It's called Tomorrowland. And it's a movie that uh, I feel very passionate about. It's funny, it's sci-fi, it's Disney, it's exciting. But it also has a great deal of spirituality and consciousness behind it. And uh, the subject that Blaine's been talking about for eight weeks, which is how our thoughts and our consciousness, that everything we put out into the field affects what kind of results we get. So it's about the power of positive propaganda, in my opinion. So it's a very fun movie. George Clooney's in it. It came out a few years ago, and we're going to set up a TV and have a little TV party. So 1230 next Sunday. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Adam. You know, Adam had to get up here and say something today. And we just, we just love everything that you do, Adam. Thank you. All right, I think uh, without further ado, before we do anything further, why don't we stand up and we'll um, say, say the prayer of protection together, then we'll join as one big circle and sing the peace song. At least that's the plan from this moment forward. So for ourselves, uh, for Maui, for this ministry, and for the world, let's pray together the prayer for protection, which begins, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are, God is. Thank you for being here today. Where I